What is good guys, it's Ray J back with another video. And in this one, I want to break down what's going on with the overall market, what you should be watching for moving forward. I want to talk about Tesla, Spy, NVIDIA, the QQQ, and a couple of other tickers. What's going on with the big data that's going to be released very, very soon. How all of this may affect the share prices of all these different tickers. But before I break anything to all this information, before I get into any more details, let me just mention a couple of things. I am firstly not a financial planner, so take none of this as financial advice. And also, if you guys can, please check out the Weeble link, which is down below and in the description. If you sign up for Weeble, the link down below and deposit any amount of money to the account, you are guaranteed up to 12 free stocks. The offer ends very soon, and it's in just about seven days, so check it out before they run out. Anyways, let's break down what's going on with the market. Looking at SPY and Tesla, both of these things are up in the pre-market, trying to push up as we were talking about yesterday. And right now, the market is trying to show a little bit more strength than before after getting this big drop from yesterday, and trying to make this nice recovery. So as of right now, the market looks a little bit more bullish. It looks like it's going to try to pop a little bit more. But like I warned you guys earlier, it may not just last in this phase for long, right? The market could try to pop a little bit here and there. But typically what happens after the first 30 minutes to one hour is the market just starts trading sideways, turns very flat, approaching the rate hike decision and the FOMC meeting. That's likely going to happen a little bit later on after this pop is completed with. So I want to warn you guys about that and break down some other pieces of data. We technically have some crude oil data coming out an hour after the market opens, but it really doesn't really matter. It doesn't likely cause any major volatility or anything like that. We're basically going to be waiting for the 2 o'clock p.m. Fed rate hike decision. Then we also have the FOMC press conference at 2.30 p.m. all Eastern time or New York time. So make sure you're prepared for this. This is going to cause some crazy volatility. Now, a couple of things to know before the market opens. As of right now, we have the Fed day. The market is getting ready. And so far, uh, futures traders have been a little bit more quiet, but they're trying to push us up at least a little bit. We, have, we had just had the IPO of Instacart, and this was up about like 12% on Tuesday. It ended up having its debut on the NASDAQ. And that was very interesting to watch in case you guys were interested. Uh, there's also this news coming here that NEO is going to likely double the amount it plans to invest in into its park business. And this, once again, is going to be great for them as these parks are very popular and great attractions for many people out there. And besides that, I would say that that's pretty much it uh, for now that I'm going to be talking about in terms of the news. Uh, to add on to this, there's some news about Tesla. Kathy Woods said that Tesla is the biggest AI opportunity in the world. And she just said this, I believe, like uh, either a couple of hours ago or yesterday. So that's very, very awesome. And this is very exciting about it when it comes to the, you know, robo taxi and things like that. So good for Tesla so far. I haven't seen anything other uh any other pieces of news that are like that significant but for now let's talk about the charts how are things looking so looking at spy the 30 minutes time frame is looking more bullish on our macd and you can see this thing has this very very nice looking recovery phase when we zoom out of the chart there's a possible inverse head and shoulders that could be developing as we approach the fed meeting but no guarantees just yet now, on the four hour time frame, you can see SPY is also starting to turn bullish. So there's a good chance that this thing is going to try to pop as we open or we, when we get very close to open. So overall, it's looking a little bit more bullish. It looks like this thing is going to make an attempt to go a little higher. And we're going to be watching it at this 444.5 resistance right here. We actually got above our 50 EMA, which is a good sign. So as long as we get above 444.5, we can see this thing uh, try to get to 445.03 or the 200 EMA, which is going to be acting as resistance. So we could see a test for it uh, in a little bit of a higher zone. But what generally happens is, yes, we could pop a little bit, but then as time goes on, we start to cool off, we hold up, then we just start trading sideways for a couple of hours until the Fed rate hike decision comes out at 2 o'clock p.m. And don't forget the rate hike decision and the press conference are two separate things. The decision comes out at 2, and at 2.30, we have the press conference with Jerome Powell speaking. So once that data comes out, the Fed will most likely announce they're either skipping or pausing during this uh, cycle and that could cause another pop at two o'clock p.m until then expect a pop by open and then sideways price action approaching the decision okay same thing with tesla i think tesla is going to follow the trend tesla looks like it has an inverse head and shoulders like structure we're looking bullish on the 30 minutes time frame the four hour time frame is also looking a little bit better for the stock as it's starting to curl and tesla has been holding above its 50 ema for the time being so we're going to be watching tesla it's currently at resistance around this 267.5 area we're going to be watching this thing try to get very close to this 270 area i think there's a good chance this is going to try as long as we try to break above this 200 ema uh, we're going to be watching this and i think there's a good chance it's going to break in we're going to get very close to 270 and we have this imbalance right here that could 
push Tesla a little bit higher. Now, don't forget that with the inverse head and shoulders, this thing does have the potential to make a full measure and move all the way back up to 275, but we're not going to worry about 275 until we break and hold above 270 first, but there is likely going to be a little bit of upside. Tesla's going to push a little bit at least to 270. Then we could just see some sideways price action after the first 30 minutes to one hour approaching the rate hike decision, and then we're going to see high volatility once that comes out. So expect a pop and then some chop as time goes on. Uh, at, at least approaching the FOMC decision, right? That's what I'm referring to. Uh, when it comes to Apple, I think the same thing is likely going to play out. If you look at Apple, it's still trying to hold up. It's only down like 0.01%. Apple is going to be approaching some tough resistance around this 180 area if it does try to break above that. Uh, as of right now, we're currently just trying to test. We're basically around this like 179 area. We're kind of chopping around a bit. So I think Apple is going to turn more choppy. We could pop a little bit more on it. We could get closer to 180 before we start to chop a bit. And that's before we start reacting to the rate hike decision and things like that. Uh, QQQ, same thing. Going to be looking for a pop. We want to see this thing get back to about 371.4. If you break it, 372.15 is on the table. I think the QQQ could pump a little bit more. We also have a potential inverse head and shoulders on it. Uh, it may try to pop a little bit. Then it may come back down and start shopping a little bit. Look for a pop when we open. Shop as time goes on. And then as we approach the rate hike decision at 2 p.m., that's when we're going to see high volatility. All right? So that's what I think it's likely going to do. For NVIDIA, NVIDIA is looking kind of flat right now, not as strong as other tickers. Uh, on the four hour time frame, uh, it looks like it's just continuing to chop around, but it is holding the support right here. It actually established a higher low. So there's a good chance NVIDIA is going to try to push towards 440, if not 442, and kind of trade sideways from here. So it's looking a little bit less uh, strong than other tickers out there. The relative strength is not the same. So I would say that as of right now, it's looking kind of decent. We have some nice wicks on the bottom right here developing. I would say that it's likely going to trade a little sideways, not be as strong as it could be. But it should try to hold up. I don't see it like tanking too hard. I think it's going to try to hold up. We're going to be watching 440 and 442 on NVIDIA. Uh, with that said, the VIX, we're going to be watching to see how this opens. Uh, if this thing tries to like gap up or something, then there's going to be a chance of it coming back down to fill its gap. And as of right now, it's not really open. We're going to be waiting for this. I do want to note, however, on the 30 minutes time frame, uh, I think I was noticing this. We have this potential bearish divergence right here that played out, and we're currently sitting at support. So we're going to be watching, does the VIX get a, like a bounce off this later on? Does it kind of chop here and then end up bouncing because of Jerome Powell? Or is it the exact opposite? Does Jerome Powell cause the VIX to end up breaking below the 50 EMA? And we see the VIX start sinking thanks to this bearish divergence. This could be like a double top like formation. And this could lead to more downside for the VIX, which could be because of the market potentially pumping. Uh, there's a real possibility. Uh, we're just going to be open-minded and wait. It's always better to be patient and see what Jerome Powell causes instead of trying to just predict what that's going to do. But the dollar, in my opinion, <laughs> excuse me, sorry, guys. The dollar is looking uh, kind of like, it's looking very, very indecisive right now. It is trying to curl right now on the 30 minutes time frame, but it's not looking too strong. We're kind of shopping around this 105 area, so I think there's a good chance it's going to continue to do so. There's not a whole lot going on with it. The four hours is starting to look a little weaker. Uh, not much to say about it. It could actually come back down to like 104.75 if we end up breaking below uh, 104.96, this 50 EMA. So I could see it dropping a little bit, but I'm still kind of in the middle as it looks quite indecisive. So we're just going to be waiting to see how this ends up moving things. Uh, Meta is still holding up as we expected. But anyways, that's what I have for this video. Please be ready for a potential pop as we open some shop approaching the FOMC uh rate hike decision and then the fomc meeting as we approach those things then as soon as those things come out expect some high volatility again uh just to be clear i want to give you guys a hint there is a good chance that the market may pop again when the rate hike decision comes out because the fed is most likely going to announce that they're not raising rates this time around as expected so that that is what i favor but then with the fomc uh, press conference. You never know what Jerome Powell is going to say, so always be open-minded. Anyways, that's what I have for this video. Have a great day, everyone. Get ready for some very, very crazy volatility later on during the day. And for now, watch the market make an attempt to push, at least as we open. Thank you for listening. Have a great day. And I'll see you guys very, very soon. Thank you and peace out.